standing right here in front of me. <laughs> Please don't. And you have anything you want to say? You want to get on camera? No, you won't feel like, okay, it's cool. My husband, what you got to say? To God be the glory. Of course, as always. I cut my locks. They look yes. like they're starting back, but I'm not starting my locks back just yet. Did I introduce you, my bad? Y'all, this is my I'm husband, Reggie. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm her man. But insert that Martin clip. I'm with her. Gina. Gina, is he with you? Because if he's not, he's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's with me. He's my, my kind. Man. Man. <laughs> oh, man. This is my I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is my husband Reggie. He has a name. His name is Reginald. Reggie Reg. Shots by Reg. Whatever. Like he goes by all of those things. And tell him a little bit about yourself. I am a photographer by craft. I turn his heat on. So love design. I'm a creative. And I am trying to break the seal in content creation. I yes. have not uh, been consistent with it. And I'm trying to break into tech. I'm gonna hold it. Yep. Uh, hey, hey, y'all feel like a little kid. Hey, y'all. Got a little game, games. <laughs> Got a little games. Game, games. <laughs> game, games. <laughs> but um, that's that's pretty much. Who I'm is, and I am a jack of all trades, not really, but I am a master of a couple. He's things. a multi hyphenate, like his wife. Yes, I'm a multi hyphenate. Yeah, you go, what you mean? What? What you talking about? What? Like, I said something bad. What? It's a no. good thing. You don't know what you a said... multi hyphenate is? Yes, I think you, you told me before. Yes, but, it's a person has many professions and skills. Usually a celebrity, but you know, oh, not a celebrity. Oh, well, you're a celebrity, though. I'm a celebrity in his heart. Facts. <laughs> in the heart of Jesus. In the, yes, Jesus knows me. Yes. Knows me well. He loves me. He thinks the world of me. And, um, you know, for me, I think at the end of the day, like, I love design, I love being a creative, and I want to be able to help uh, young men or young women break into the job market. I just want to help people, like either through creativity, through my life experiences, and just be open and honest. That's it. Yeah. Social media is such a facade. You really have to be sober-minded to really discern everything that you see. It's like this market, and you have to figure out what's good for you and what's not good for you as far as what are you what you're consuming. So over the last year or so, I've like decided to just be extremely intentional, especially since I surrendered my life to God. Like to be really intentional in how I maneuver and navigate social media as a y'all have to excuse our dog Luffy he's eating in the background but um how I navigate social media as a consumer as well as a creative and I think like I probably will make a couple of different videos but I've talked about social media on this channel before I've talked about how I believe that the enemy has and is using social media to 
put a stumbling block in front of many people. And what I mean by that is basically social media can get you caught up. Okay. That's in non-biblical terms, but like if you're not careful, you can get caught up in social media. Not just caught up as far as how you look at yourself, comparing yourself to other people and uh, your life to other people's lives, but caught up with the wrong people, you know, whether it be relationships, friendships, whatever. So I'm a person who, especially over the last couple of years, has been convicted to be extremely careful with not only how I present on social media, but how I am representing Christ on social media. And that doesn't mean that I'm out here trying to be, you know, holier than now or trying to be fake because I'm not those those things. I couldn't be fake if I wanted to be. But it mm. just means that I... Why are you saying mm. like that? Mm. I couldn't be fake if I wanted to be, okay? Period. <laughs> be a follower in Christ, but not like this curated, boxed in, religious figure online. Like at one point I just, I'm not even gonna hold y'all. At one point I was like, really like, I resonated with a lot of people who were overtly, who were just super like, uh, I don't wanna say churchy either, just religious in like how they presented online, like overtly, overtly. And I resonated with that type of content. So I really did believe that like, that was what God was calling me to do. I genuinely believe that. And not saying that my content that I have on my channel is not God led because it is, but I believe that God wanted me to like continue that further. And it wasn't until I continued to fast and pray that I realized that God called me to make the older content, but that was it in reference to what he wanted me to say in that season. Not saying he won't ever call me to do content like that currently and in the future, but I'm in a season now where I'm learning who I am as a daughter of God, as a Christ follower, as someone who is an influencer. Um, I'm not saying that, oh yeah, I'm the I'm trying to be like this biggest influencer, I'm not. But I realize if you have a platform, whether you have 100 followers or 100,000 or a million followers or subscribers, you're influencing people, especially if you proclaim the name of Christ. So people are looking at you and that's just what it is. Non-believers and believers alike, they're looking at you to see like um, what you're about. Right. So I think we have to be conscious of that whenever we are trying to you know work out our salvation and live a life that's pleasing to god but knowing we're not going to be perfect and i think on this channel god has just continuously honed me to be who i am today and he's called me off of this platform sometimes to just work on my heart brought me back on it even though i didn't want to come back on it so that he could speak to people through me and tell them what he wanted to tell them and then also just expose people who wouldn't otherwise be exposed to the gospel. Like people who are looking for a lot of content, they're not even thinking about Jesus. They're not even thinking about the gospel, but they will be held accountable for what they had access to, whether they decided to receive it or not. And I think that's one reason why God has called me to merge both Christ and Locks, mm -hmm. um, because he wants to give access to people who aren't looking for him, but he wants that wants them to be exposed to the opportunity yeah. because whenever we do meet him, whether it be at the end of time or whether he calls us home, we're gonna have to give an account for our life and he's gonna ask us, you know, what we did with the knowledge that we had of him. And we got to, I mean, we can't do nothing but tell the truth at that point. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you are a person who is kind of tinkering and you're on the fence of like, mm -hmm. I'm interested, like I see a lot of people who look dope and they really are looking like they are devout and dedicated to God, but like, I don't know if that's for me. Like, just just don't think about it too hard. Like, just lean into God, talk to him. Just talk to God and be like, God, like this is what it is. Like, I don't know if you're real, but these people that I'm watching, they seem to really believe in you and they talk about their experiences and I just wanna know if you're real in my life and just show me that you're real and just, you know, wait for him to show you. You know, God doesn't mind us asking him questions. I think that's another thing in the church that I don't necessarily like is that 
there's this impression that God is like doesn't like when people ask him questions or don't even like whenever we just question you know his presence in our life we that's not going to change who he is he is who he is regardless one of the biggest things about being in uh, being in Christ is when you face adversity with people who have a issue or a dilemma or a concern when it comes to Christ followers and Christ believers because you're the closest thing that they may have to either seeing through example, practicing what they preach, or you might be the closest person to them in order for them to express how they feel about a community who are in Christ. Because a lot of times you see it online, people are attacking Christian people, attacking believers because they can't attack the, the, the people that they see online that they want to voice their opinion to just to get something off. So because you're the closest to what they want to get off, they want to put every uh, feeling of how they feel about Christianity on you. Like you're the bearer of the whole uh, community of Christ followers. When that's not the case, and people love to do that, so. Not all people, but some people just don't. A lot of people. Genuinely, like some people just genuinely don't like some Christians. It's not all Christians. No. Because maybe some poor experiences that, or mm -hmm. bad experiences that they've had with a Christian, a poor representative of Christ. Yes. So they just put that on all people who believe in, believe in Christ. And I, you know, obviously, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I just felt the need to say, like, just because you've had a poor experience with somebody who maybe in a church or a family member or whatever, mm -hmm. that is not Christ. Right. They are a person who may have a heart for Christ, but they weren't being led by the Spirit in that time that you were dealing with them. Right. That's not Christ. And I think if a lot more people were able to separate Christ and his heart for people mm -hmm. from people who claim Christ and were poor representatives of Christ at that time, then right. they would understand that, hey, Jesus isn't mean. Jesus isn't hateful. That's not who he is. And I just want to give him a chance to right. speak to me. I, I don't know if this is for this life is for me, but I just want to open my heart and just see, you know, mm -hmm. and I think like that's all he wants. He just wants us to open the door to him he wants us to give him a chance and at the end of the day once you have an encounter with jesus once you have an encounter with god like you won't be the same you just mm -hmm. won't like you know um an experience and encounter with him can can and does often change your life it's up to us though to allow him to continuously work on our heart though what do you think yeah he well he going to work on your heart, regardless if you want it or not, it's going to happen. He going to work on it. Now, granted, he ain't going to force you to accept him. He's not going to do that. But when you do accept him, the things that you lose or the things that are stripped away to better relationship with the Lord and better your relationship with either people in your circle, uh, you can't predict that. And it's going to happen. And there's going to be things that you no longer take part in. There's going to be things that you no longer talk about because he's constantly building you up by taking things away that is not like him that is in you. And it's a beautiful thing, but it's a, it's a process. It's an ongoing process. As long as you want Christ, there's going to be something that uh, you're going to be refined in. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it might not always feel good because you're being pruned. And the pruning process um, is honestly, it's endless. We're never gonna be perfect, ever, no matter what we do. But the thing is, there's perfect love in the Lord. So, as long as you stay in the Lord, there's gonna be perfect love. And that perfect love, sometimes, is going to be a shocker to people because they don't know you in that perfect love. They know you as who you were before. They don't know you as the new creature, the new creation. Therefore, it's going to shock people. And some people might not believe it, but that's that's on them. As long as you remain in the Lord is all that matters. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Like, And there are going to be people who don't take you seriously. I had a family member at one point that said, like, Basically, in so many words, if I can't prove 
like what I believe in, then if I can't come correct, I might as well not say anything at all. And that that, that hurt my feelings. But I, I had to come to terms with the fact that, you know, whenever we're in Christ, especially when we are bold in our faith, there are going to be people who are just as bold against the faith. And we can't allow that to make us scary and make us like fearful and have a fear of man. We just have to take that and still, you know, override our flesh to show people, regardless, the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, that's difficult to do, especially if you're a person who may not even be a people person to begin with, but God is calling you to love people. That's difficult. A lot of people think, oh, the hard things are, are the you know, obvious things to give up. Like a lot of people like to talk about um, sexual immorality or smoking or um, overindulging in alcohol, things like that, like the obvious you know, sins. But at the end of the day, sometimes just like the sins of the heart are even harder to deal with whenever God is pruning you. And I know I mentioned this in my testimony video that at the end of the day, like them, them, them heart posture sins, those are the ones that for me are just really have to continue to be at God's feet about. He, he has it that way because he knows that you cannot do this in your own strength. You cannot live a life that's pleasing to God. You cannot avoid um, grieving the Holy Spirit without continuously seeking God's face. You have to seek his face in order to live right. So yeah i mean that's something that is important whenever you are understanding what it's like to live as a as a christian is to know that god's got your back and that in the day you can't do this by yourself but he made it that way he made it that way for you to depend on him his holy spirit the holy spirit is our helper he's our advocate you know jesus is an intercessor he's in heaven praying for us all the time that we're able to be in this earth and continuously do what he's called us to do within the gifts that he's given us to mm -hmm. show the different fruits of the spirit to people so that we can fulfill God's will in this earth. You know, whenever we got saved or whenever Jesus found us, he didn't just save us for ourselves. He saved us so that we could be used as vessels for him to save other people. And Sometimes, especially for somebody like me, I'm an introvert. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a people person or an extrovert, that's him. But <laughs> like, I, it's hard for me sometimes to, to um, kind of overtly just show the love of Christ to people. But that's something that God is tilling my heart about is showing the love of Christ to people, regardless of the situation. Um, that's one of the things that I'm dealing with as far as just being conformed more and more to the image of Christ, you know? How about you? The Lord is always working on me. Um, what's changed in me is a lot. Uh, one main thing is I was going down the line of being extremely militant with everything that was going on in, in the United States and just in the world, yeah. George and Floyd and all of that. So I had a lot of rage built up. Work stress, life stress, on top of seeing uh, people of color being beat, abused, like killed. killed. Like every day it was like, it was like getting like, it was escalating and constantly just growing and growing and growing. So that rage in me would have grown very heavy. So I got to a place to where I was just ready for someone to tempt me so I could just like let all that anger out on that person or people, whomever. And you know, when I had my account with the Lord, like that feeling of rage subsided. Now granted, there's always parts of yourself that you still feel, but you really call on the Holy Spirit to like work in you in those moments because you don't want to go back. You don't want to backtrack. You don't want to go back to how you used to handle situations. And it has helped me tremendously. So the Lord did a work in my heart that subsided and 
like eradicated the anger that I had towards life situations that are unfair. At the end of the day, I just feel like, you know, the Lord delivered me from a lot of new age practices, a whole lot of them. The Lord just delivered me from uh, a mindset of depending on everything but him. So that's kind of what the Lord did in me. That's good. Like, I'm glad that you were able to, you've never been on a channel talking about, I didn't know that right now where it's a super duper informal talk. Like, we don't even have the correct lighting on for y'all. We don't even know if the audio is straight. We just decided to, you know, pull out the camera, phone, and just talk. But audio going to be good. All I know is at the end of the day, I, it's been a blessing to be able to witness the Lord transforming Reggie and just to see him continuously grow, you know, as a husband as well as a man of God and a godly husband like it's just amazing to see that and i definitely believe that god is going to bring someone in your life a wise counsel like a godly you know devout man of god in your life as wise counsel so that you can continuously grow even more in in christ and i pray a lot about god sending me a mentor, spiritual, I guess a spiritual mother, like someone who um, is in the faith, someone who's older than I am, someone who can really um, pour into me specifically. And I know he's heard my prayer, but in the current season that Reggie and I are in, we just don't have access to those people right now. So he, this is how he's answered my prayer in this season. He's just sent me so many resources, just resources on top of resources through books through videos through just different things that he's been speaking to me through that have really helped me um help build my spirit up help um you know help me navigate like mental health emotional health and it's not just about when a lot of people say mental health has a negative connotation mental health is just the literal state of how your mind is it doesn't mean a negative thing or a positive thing it's just how your state is so um, i think a lot of people just don't think about how god created us he created us as holistic beings we're not just spiritual we are also physical and we are emotional and whenever we have well i can't speak for other people whenever i had my encounter with god he immediately changed me spiritually but it's been a process on the emotional aspect and and coming into who I am as a woman of God. And then lately, in the last few months especially, that has begun to manifest in how I I see myself physically in reference to like how I treat my body, how God is telling me how he wants me to take care of my body. So it's not just the spiritual aspect. I think there's a very heavy focus on when you come into Christ, like changing spiritually or allowing the Holy Spirit to change you spiritually but it's also emotional as well like our spiritual spiritual life uh, we get that seed the holy spirit we immediately get him but our soul our mind our mental health that's something that is continuously being healed and changed through the holy spirit and that can manifest in in the physical and reference to how we treat our bodies as well so like i know that's my been my experience and you know i just have seen god's hand on my life and i've also noticed like another thing god allowing me to see how i was trying to do these things in my own strength before i came into him and how i was feeling miserably and how i honestly needed a lot of external validation from my communities online and how honestly those communities are just like empty wells like there's nothing that's going to give you the fulfillment that you need that your soul needs outside of Christ you're not going to get it it might be temporarily feeling like you're good but at the end of the day you're always going to come back to that sense when you don't have Christ you're always going to come into that sense of emptiness or feeling hollow because idols or anything that's not God is not meant to make us feel whole he's the only one that's going to make us feel whole and I know for me like when I had my encounter immediately I felt a sense of a difference in my spirit 
but it didn't mean that I had stopped doing things that I wasn't, I don't want to say wasn't supposed to be doing, but that was out of the will of God. It just meant that I had now what I needed to facilitate that change in a supernatural way, which is the Holy Spirit. So I just think that, and, and me allowing the Holy Spirit just authentically and unapologetically to change my heart, that was a witness to Reggie and yes. God utilized my journey. And I think it says that in the scripture too. I don't know the scripture. I'll put it on the screen. A wife, her life influencing the husband. And I've really seen how God has worked through my relationship with him to change or begin the process of changing Reggie. So what do you think? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Because like I said, that was a good thing. It was very clear to me that Jesus was not in any of that. So my walk and changes that I've made in life and it's better at my marriage, it's better at my relationship with my family, better at my relationship with friends, bettered, it has bettered my uh, interaction with people who have uh, different um, thoughts about people who are saved. Because a lot of times, the way I talk to people and how I basically share my testimony to people uh, is a very unorthodox way. And it's, I'm just expressing myself and talking just as normal. And people receive that more so than someone who are giving them a show and telling them they need to be saved. And I always tell people, like, you know, you, know, you can always open up your Bible, talk to the Lord in private, and accept Jesus because at the end of the day, he's not going to force you. And for people to tell you that you, if you don't, that you're going to die or you're going to do... Die and go to hell. Right. It, it's not... I don't resonate with that, and I don't feel like it's right because you shouldn't scare people to the Lord. You should show them love because there is perfect love in the Lord. So the whole message... Yeah, like the whole message is really to show love to people, the same love that the Lord extended to you. You should share that with people also. There's something in us naturally that knows between what's good and what's bad. So when something happens to people, the first name they call is Jesus. I don't care if you're a gangster or whatever. Oh God. Oh God, they, it's, it's something that is, it's, it's innate in us, it's in our DNA, to it's know the name of the Lord. Right, exactly. And the people who don't believe, I don't understand it. I don't yeah. because how do you, how did you how are you born? How did you get here? Every time you breathe, that is a gift. Every time you wake up, that is a gift. And people should, you know, give God his glory. Yeah. Give give God his flowers. Every day. <laughs> Every day. You gotta give the Lord his flowers. Yeah, I mean, God gonna get his glory regardless. Yeah. Like, if you give it to him or not. But I think when it comes down to it, it's about acknowledging. And that's the thing, people don't acknowledge. If Even worse than that, people, if they do acknowledge, they ridicule. Um, and it's so sad because ultimately speaking, like, it's, it doesn't do anything, you know, outside of making them feel better in the moment. But when it comes down to it, people who are in God, he tells us that that's just one of the things we may deal with. Experiencing persecution, persecution as well as, you know, we know that we might hear people talk about our God in a very nasty way. So like, I'm not gonna front. That is, I've, I've been in situations online um, and in person where I've heard people ridiculing either myself personally or just talking about Jesus in a mocking way and it has hurt my feelings. But I have to realize what that is, the root of that, and understand that this is just what it is. It doesn't change who God is. God is going to be God regardless of people. Okay? You know. And at the end of the day, like, the whole point of the enemy messing with people, specifically believers, you know, is to mess with our faith. Is to try to make us question who we are in God. Question if we're doing the quote-unquote right thing. Question if surrendering our life to God is worth it and to make us turn back.
to make us turn back. And I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and hold y'all and say like, there haven't been splits, I mean, microseconds that I have thought about, like, what if I were to go back to the world? But then I think about, ugh, like I literally have a like a repulsed feeling like, go back to what? Go back to what? Yeah, like, how can you go, how can you experience God and then turn back and go back to what? Like, ew, like, uh, for real, like, that's, I'm not putting on, like, that's genuinely how I feel. Um, when God opens your eyes and he, he just takes the scale, removes the scales from your eyes and you start to see the world for what it is, it's like, why would I want that? Ew, like, for real. And that's my, that's honestly my, like, God, you know, I am telling the truth. That is my feeling. Um, when I know that we have a true enemy that literally hates us, that wants to kill us and leaving God would be coming into agreement with that. Like, no, no. And the thing about it is the enemy is not going to outright, whenever people do turn away from God, he's not going to overtly say, oh yes, this is what's happening. He's going to make it look sexy. He's going to make it look salacious. Just make it feel like you're doing what feels good to you. But that's not how God works. It's not about how we feel, okay? God doesn't want us to be miserable, but at the end of the day, his primary concern isn't our emotions and feelings, okay? His primary concern is his glory. And a lot of times when it comes down to him getting glory and he chooses to... Um, get his glory through allowing us to go through situations that might be painful it's for our good overall and he always makes things work out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose and he also through his holy spirit gives us the strength to endure you know what he calls us to endure because we have his grace and his grace is enough his grace is enough okay and it's just it's a lot to take in especially if you don't have a full understanding of the gospel if you're just in church and that's all your understanding of god is and your church isn't thoroughly teaching you the gospel you might not truly understand that god's grace is enough to get you through anything even if you are struggling with something like it's the enemy that makes you feel less than when you're struggling with something. It's the enemy that makes you feel like it's never going to change. You're never going to be good enough. That's never God. Ever. Okay? Mm -hmm. He is patient. As long as you're in a place where your heart posture is in a place where you're continuously, even in the cycle, the struggle that you're going through, continuously calling out for God to help you change, that's what matters to God. You get to a place where you're called caught up in these cycles and you're like i'm giving up it is what it is i'm just going back to the world that's when you're in trouble okay oh seven of them coming back to you <laughs> like at the end of the day like that's when when you ever get to the point where it's like oh this is fine like whatever it is what it is that's when you should be like really concerned because at that point you've come into agreement with the fact that this is what it is don't ever come into agreement with anything that the enemy is putting in your face. Yeah, you gotta repent immediately. And repenting doesn't mean being perfect. It just means that, hey, I am turning to God for him to continuously work in and perfect this area or areas in my life. And I know I'm gonna fall short because I'm a human being, but guess what? God, I am your child and you're gonna work on me. And that's just what it is. We ain't never gonna be perfect ever until we are in front of Jesus. We're not gonna be perfect. And that's what it comes down to. So, yeah, like, by yeah. Um, so, I think another thing that I wanted to just talk about on this channel at some point is just more about like my experiences and how I've come to this point on my channel. Uh, there was one point I think I was talking about at the beginning. If I didn't, then I'm tired. I was just, uh, I may have been talking about it with you, Reggie, like how I felt like. I had to present a certain way in order to be used by God. I had to be a certain way in order for people to receive anything I had to say when it comes down to talking about faith. But at the end of the day, God has a specific way that he talks through every single one of the people that he talks to. And he has a specific group of people that are preordained for whatever message he has to speak through you. And that message might be 
a whole lot of scripture it might not be but at the end of the day when god is speaking through you whatever you're saying is going to line up with scripture if you made it to this point and you are thinking about let's just say your creator or you're thinking about creating and you want to put out your testimony you're feeling led to this might be your sign you know um from god to to start your channel page whatever and understand that you don't have to sit up here and be like everybody else. You ain't got to sit here and be no pastor in a pulpit. You ain't got to be no teacher. You ain't got to be none of that. Just be who God has called you to be in that context. Speak how God is calling you to speak, how the Holy Spirit wants to speak through you. And just be in your word. That's the first thing I will say. Be in your word. Because if you're in your word and you're constantly in the right heart posture, you're going to be speaking of the Lord. What you're saying is going to line up with scripture, regardless if you have a scripture at every corner of every sentence or not. And that's the that's what I had to come to terms with. And like that gave me a sense of freedom that allowed the personality that God gave me to shine through while he's still ministering to people through my channel. Yeah. That's kind of like nutshell of all I have to say. The whole series. <laughs> oh, okay. You got something to say. To God be the glory. We're yeah, tired. We got the itis. We just came from dinner. It was amazing. It's my baby's it so good. birthday weekend. His birthday is tomorrow. By the time y'all see this video, he will be another year older. So Talk yeah. Stop. <laughs> why, yeah, God? Why is you making like this? You better. You know the church doesn't like that. Anyway. Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I really don't have too much to say. Our dog is looking at us like he wanna he, cuss he us gotta, out. He wanna do something. But at any rate. You can sit down, period, Pooch, because you're not going to sit up here and tell us what to do. We'll come get you when we're done. That's it. I don't really have anything else to say. I feel like God has spoken through me all he wants to tonight anyway, and I'm good. Anything else? Okay, you good? <laughs> you like me too? I'm ready to get off this phone. All right, you guys. Um, God bless. Uh, if you got anything from this video, leave a timestamp with whatever you got. From this video and until the next one um, bye bye